Welcome to JSON programming tutorial number four. In this lesson you will learn how to make your JSON AJAX data requests more dynamic by posting variables to your dynamic PHP JSON files that we learned how to make in tutorial number three. And we'll also use PHP's JSON decode and JSON encode functions to more easily format JSON data handling with PHP. So you'll be introduced to those two functions within this lesson. And then in tutorial number five, we'll bring everything together that we've been learning to make an actual JSON application that would be in a real world environment. We're going to resume with the same exact files that we left off with in part three. Now our objective is to make this AJAX get JSON a post request rather than a get request. So let's go right here and change get to post then the set request header and I accidentally put the true parameter on the set request header, but set request header actually only gets two parameters. So remove that true. Even if you're using get or post, you only need two parameters for the set request header. And I thought I was putting that true parameter into my open method when we started these tutorials. But you'll see that if you have true here, it won't stop this uh, application from running and you really won't get any errors but it's not needed there and it's really not even a valid parameter for that method. You really want to set true here if you want this open method to be asynchronous. So we'll leave this as content type and for the value we're going to put xww form URL encoded. So pretty much everything will stay exactly the same within our Ajax request but here in the send method is where you can post some variables to your magic PHP JSON file. So I'm going to post var1 is equal to birds. Put the ampersand symbol to make these URL encoded variables. var2 is equal to bees. So var1 is equal to birds and var2 is equal to bees. So var1 and var2 are going to get posted to that magical PHP script that we created. And this will allow you to do things like access the database information dynamically, make pagination, whatever you want to do. Let's say you listing Maybe you have a thousand things in your database and you're only listing ten items at a time in a box. But you want to give the user little controls to change what information goes in that box. What ten items? You can make pagination. You can change your queries altogether to bring all new dynamic data back into that box in real time on the page without refresh. And that's why JSON is handy. You know what I'm saying, Mario? So when the data comes back, we're going to still create our object the same way in this for loop we're going to access all the objects within the JSON data and instead of user we're going to make this say property A and age will make say property B because we're just going to make a very simple object to return to our Ajax mechanism now we can get rid of all of this data back here and where it says is let's just put the pipe symbol actually I'm going to change the syntax up a little bit. I'm going to put double quotes in the front and then a plus sign to attach property A to this string which is going to be just make that string say property A and then its value will follow it and then we'll copy that line and do the same exact thing but this one will say property B and you want to change this to property B because property A and property B are going to be the properties within the object that we're going to be sending back and it's going to contain these two dynamic variables birds and bees well they're statically placed in there right now but you can easily send that through this ajax get json function as arguments those two dynamic variables but we'll be going more in depth about that exact thing in the next lesson where we show how to create an actual application so let's see right here let's put a horizontal rule so let's put plus double quote double quote and right here hr forward slash there we go and that's all you need to do so with this kind of setup you're posting to your PHP file which is going to send back JSON formatted data to your Ajax request and you're using variables that way you can explore how to send things dynamically to that PHP script now let's go to my JSON list.php that we left off with in tutorial 3 and what we'll do here is remove the file get contents function just put single quote single quote for the JSON data and then right below the header function 
we're going to scoop up those two posted variables from our AJAX request. Remember variable 1 and variable 2, which we're sending static values, which is birds and bees. So var 1 is going to contain birds, var 2 is going to contain bees. Now we'll create a simple JSON data that has only one object within it. So within the curly braces, type in double quote, double quote, and in between double quotes, obj1. Then we'll type in colon, and on the right side of the colon is where the value for that object 1 goes, so that will be its own little nested object. So you put curly brace opening and curly brace closing there. And the first property within this object is going to be property A, colon, and then it needs a value. For now, we'll just put xxx. Then we put a comma, double quote, double quote, property B, colon, double quote, double quote, and xxx. And that's where property B's value will go. So let's put those values in place now. To get those inserted in PHP, all you have to do is put a single quote and another single quote. And what you have done there is you're breaking that string and you're allowing dynamic variables to be put in between those two double quotes. So you put single quote, single quote in between those two double quotes, dot, dot in between the single quotes, and in between your dots, you put your variable, control C, pop it in right there, bar one. And then you can just kind of copy that single quote setup and put it here, make this one bar two. So all you're doing is string concatenation here which is pretty much what we've been doing in JavaScript the whole time where we put the plus signs you know how you put your double quotes and then plus signs to append variable data to a string it's the same thing we're doing in PHP here it doesn't use plus signs though it uses dots so now you have JSON data variable ready and it has one object within it whose property is obj1 and its value is another nested object so now press control s and you'll want to FTP myjsonlist.php and JSON Tutorial 3. Actually, this should be JSON Tutorial 4. Save as JSON Tutorial number 4. Save JSON Tutorial 3. I'm just going to backtrack by pressing Control Z and get back to where we were when we ended Tutorial 3. And remember, this true parameter does not go on the set request header, it only goes on your open method not your set request header method. That was my bad. But as you can see, it didn't even mess with the application at all and everything worked just fine, but it's a redundant, not needed parameter. All right, so you just close JSON Tutorial 3. and You have JSON Tutorial 4 now with the new setup that's posting variables. So you want to FTP JSON Tutorial 4, FTP myjsonlist.php up to your live web server because this will not work on a local machine. And this is the result that you should get. I'm here on my live web server testing those exact scripts that we just wrote. Reload the page. You can see it says requesting for a split second. Then it sends that object back. And we are able to parse it within JavaScript. So the JSON object, the JSON data came back. And we parsed it in JavaScript. And property A was birds and property B was bees. So this is just a very basic example. Sending this object back is just a very basic example. That's just a really a test to prove to yourself that those variables are in fact being posted from your AJAX request to your dynamic PHP JSON list. And then you can do things like query your database, your MySQL database, differently according to what those dynamic variables are. Or you can dig into a folder, different folders on your system. Maybe you have a bunch of image galleries and for each gallery it has its own folder full of images so on the client side you can let the user pick from one of those folder names and your PHP since PHP is able to access any folders uh, contents dynamically you can pull all of the images out of any folder dynamically no matter how many images there are and you have no prior knowledge of the amount of images in there and their names so you can do magical stuff I want to go to develop PHP and introduce you guys to, to PHP's JSON built-in functions. And actually, they're right here on the home page now. But if you don't see them on the home page, you can always just use my search bar here to search for JSON underscore decode and JSON underscore encode. But when you get to any of those, each one will have the other two on the left here. So no matter which one you arrive at, you'll see all of the PHP JSON functions available for you to use. Now let's take a look at JSON decode first. The JSON decode PHP function converts JSON data to PHP array data. 
That means you can take any JSON format data and it will turn it into a PHP associative array or a PHP STD class object. So just familiarize yourself real well with the parameters that it can have applied to it and mess around with the examples here. I have some nice code examples here that go a little more in depth than the ones at php.net. So we pretty much show you how to parse the multi-dimensional array that would be your JSON data object. Okay, so decode is when you want to convert JSON formatted data to PHP array type data. Now JSON encode is when you want to convert PHP data to JSON formatted data. For instance, when you're going to query your database in your magic PHP JSON file, you can query your database, get all of that array data back from the database call, and JSON format encode it. So you just JSON encode all of that data, and here's an example. So just familiarize yourself with its parameters and play with this little example. So familiarize yourself with JSON decode and JSON encode because we're going to be using them within tutorial number five. And in tutorial number five, we'll be taking everything we've learned here and making a PHP MySQL JSON application that would serve some kind of purpose in the real world. And perhaps I'll make it directly on World of Webcraft or something where I can access my database of information to do some kind of magical thing on the page without refresh and handling loads of data or whatever. Maybe we'll make an image gallery Maybe we'll just make a data box that has all kind of dynamic information that the user can choose from. But I'm not sure exactly what kind of application we'll make, but I'll try to make something that shows the, the power of using JSON encoded data. Something that will make sense to use in the real world.